ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय यथाशिष्टाशिना सो मुझे सर्वीर्दिशुजते ते तम पाप ये पचंती आत्मा खारना भुंजते ते ये पचंती आत्मा खारना शिष्टाशिना सो गुंथे सर्वीर्दिशय गुंजते थे तम ये पचंती आत्मा खारना सन्तो मुझे सर्वीर्दिशे मुझे सर्वीर्दिशे गुंजते ते तम ये पचंती आत्मकारे सर्वीर्दिशे ते तम of food taken after performance of yajna asina eaters santaha the devotees मुचंते गेट रिलीफ सर्व फ्रॉम सिंस भुंजते एंजॉय ते दे टू बॉट अघम grievous sins papa sinners ye who pachanti prepare food atma karanat for sense enjoyment translation on purport by sila prabhupan The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins 
because they eat food which is offered first or sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment barely eat only sin. Papa, the devotees of the Supreme Lord or the persons who are in Krishna consciousness are called Santas and they are always in love with the Lord as it is described in the Brahma Samhita 538 Premandana Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadeva Hridayesho Vilokayanti The Santas being always in a compact of love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda, the giver of all pleasures, or Mukunda, the giver of liberation, or Krishna, the all-attractive person, cannot accept anything without first offering it to the Supreme Person. Therefore such devotees always perform yagnas in different modes of devotional service such as Savanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Ajanam, etc. And these performances of yagnas keep them always aloof from all kinds of contamination of sinful association in the material world. Others who prepare food for self or sense gratification are not only thieves but also the eaters of all kinds of sins. How can a person be happy if he is both a thief and sinful? It is not possible. Therefore, in order for people to become happy in all respects, they must be taught to perform the easy process of Sankirtan Yatna in full Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, there can be no peace or happiness in the world. Text 14 Anat Bhavanti Bhutani <coughs> Pajanyat Anasambhava Yatnat Bhavati Pajanya Yatna Karma Samutpavaha All living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from rains. Rains are produced by performance of yatna, sacrifice, and yagna is born or prescribed duties. Therefore, Srila Baladev Vidyabhushana, a great commentator on the Bhagavad Gita, writes as follows Ye Indradi Anagatjavasti Tam Yatnam Sarveshvaram Vishnum Abhyacha Tachchesam Asnanti tena tatteha yatram sampadayanti te santaha sarvesvarasya yatna purushasya bhaktaha sarva kilpisai anadi kala vivritai atmanu bhava pati bhandakai nikilai pakai vimuchate. The Supreme Lord, who is known as the Yatna Purusha, for well, the personal beneficiary of all sacrifices is the master of all the demigods who serve him as the different limbs of the body serve the whole. Demigods like Indra, Chandra and Varuna are appointed officers who manage material affairs and the Vedas direct sacrifices to satisfy these demigods so that they may be pleased to supply air, light and water sufficiently to produce food grains. 
the Lord Krishna is worshipped, the demigods, who are different limbs of the Lord, are also automatically worshipped. Therefore, there is no separate need to worship the demigods. For this reason, the devotees of the Lord, who are in Krishna consciousness, offer food to Krishna and then eat a process which nourishes the body spiritually. By such action, not only are past sinful reactions in the body vanquished, but the body becomes immunized to all contamination of material nature. When there is an epidemic disease, an antiseptic vaccine protects a person from the attack of such an epidemic. Similarly, food offered to Lord Vishnu and then taken by us makes us sufficiently resistant to material affection. And one who is accustomed to this practice is called a devotee of the Lord. Therefore, a person in Krishna consciousness who eats only food offered to Krishna can counteract all reactions of past material infections which are impediments to the progress of self-realization. On the other hand, one who does not do so continues to increase the volume of sinful action and this prepares the next body to resemble hogs and dogs, to suffer the resultant actions of all reactions, of all sins. The material world is full of contaminations and one who is immunized by accepting prasadam of the Lord, food offered to Vishnu, is saved from the attack, whereas one who does not do so becomes subjected to contamination. Food grains or vegetables are factually, factually eatables. The human being eats different kinds of food grains, vegetables, fruits, etc. And the animals eat the refuse of the food grains and vegetables, grass, plants, etc. Human beings who are accustomed to eating meat and flesh must also depend on the production of vegetation in order to eat the animals. Therefore, ultimately, we have to depend on the production of the field and not on the production of big factories. The field production <coughs> is due to sufficient rain from the sky and such rains are controlled by demigods like Indra, Sun, Moon, etc. and they are all servants of the Lord. The Lord can be satisfied by sacrifices. Therefore, one who cannot perform them will find himself in scarcity. That is the law of nature. Yagna, specifically the Sankirtan Yagna prescribed for this age, must therefore be performed to save us at least from scarcity of food supply. Na shishta shina santo mukchante sarva kirbishai punjate te thakam papa ye pachanti atma karana. The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first or sacrificed. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment rarely eat only sin. Anat bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anasambhavaha yatna bhavati parjanyo yatna karma samudhavaha All living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from rains. Rains are produced by performance of yatna, sacrifice, and yatna is born of prescribed duties. So, it is not an accident 
that I'm going to speak on these verses <laughs> because uh, uh, somehow throughout my career in Krishna consciousness I've been involved with preparing uh, prasadam or food for, for the Lord, for the devotees. So it will be very easy for me to talk today. Uh, Prabhupada, he would, uh, uh, when speaking on this verse, he would say, just see, Krishna consciousness is so practical. Everyone has to eat. It's the most basic, you know, necessity of life. So, here is the, the, the formula, how to, how you will, you know, not only eat, but eat nicely. Uh, and eat in such a way that we will not become entangled in the uh, cycle of action and reaction. Mm. All suffering in this material world is due to ignorance, uh, as pointed out in the Nectar of Devotion. Uh, it is the avidya that is the root cause of all suffering. Mm. What is that avidya? It is the ignorance of our constitutional position as servants of Krishna which causes us to want to enjoy independently of Him. Uh, because of that we develop uh, so many illicit desires thinking that by trying to fulfill these desires we will become happy and from the desires we bring uh, action and uh, so many sinful activities and then there's the reactions which come sometimes they uh, some actions some reactions they manifest uh, immediately and other reactions they are delayed uh, they come later on maybe many lifetimes later and some reactions, they are actually, um, I forgot the Sanskrit term, but they are actually uh, in the form of simply the perpetuation of our material existence. One, once you've done a sinful activity, there is a great risk that you will do it again. Uh, it's a, it's a vicious circle that we enter. Uh, the, if you once have smoked a cigarette, uh, one might think, well, you'll figure out it's no good, and then you will stop. But no, <laughs> the great chance is that even though it's, you know, it doesn't really give any satisfaction, but the the, the part of the it's a sinful activity, and. Uh, one of part of the reaction of that is that you will tend to smoke another cigarette and you know you become caught up like that so in this way all conditioned souls we are caught up in material existence in a great chain of sinful activities and and karmic reactions so how to break out of this especially how to break out of the sin, uh, sinful chain of having, you know, to eat. We have to eat. We don't have to smoke cigarettes. But we have to eat. You know? Even though it's, some people claim to be able to live simply on, on, on air or ether. It's, uh, some, some people, they are very, they're very uh, enamored by this idea very impressed. I don't think it's, it's, it's such an amazing thing. Uh, you know, 
Can you imagine if you could do that you wouldn't? No prasadam. <laughs> what a boring life. Uh, I think it's much better to learn the art of how to, as it is described here, prepare nice foodstuffs for the satisfaction of the Lord and then partake of the prasadam. Uh, such a nice process that we have. Uh, if you, it's a great art. Uh, how we can live happily in this world, not being deprived in any way. Oh, actually, I mean, okay, I know that prasadam is of varying qualities uh, in different places. Actually, I have to commend uh, management here in Vrindavan, the quality of the prasadam has really improved. <laughs> I think it's very nice now. Uh, so, anyway, I'm very fortunate because I kind of from the beginning I was, I got used to very nice prasadam and the tendencies and that in, in the small centers often the prasadam is better somehow. Uh, it's not an absolute rule, but uh, at least I can say I joined in Copenhagen and we were just a, just a dozen devotees there and uh, we had a nice, a good cook. Uh, was, uh, so we had very nice prasadam, I got used to that from the start. Every appearance day there was a feast with at least ten preparations. Devami Swami was there yesterday, there was day before I was talking. So I I was actually in the first six years in my career I was I was uh, under his wings. <laughs> so I remember especially one Nishinga Chaturda see he was sitting in the temple and having great fun, urging us, all of us, to eat more and more. I, well, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed that. Um, so, anyway, uh, and very early on I was also, after, after some time, this, the cook, he, for different reasons, he had to leave Denmark. So, all of a sudden, I had to cook the Sunday feast. And uh, uh, I mean, honestly speaking, it, it wasn't the greatest because I really hadn't any training. Uh, the only cookbook we had in those days was this little, little kind of uh, produced. I think it was Ketan Ananda Maharaj. You remember that first cook Hare Krishna cookbook before before Adi Raj's cookbook came out. So that was the only thing we had, and it was sometimes very, you know, you know, we tried to, I tried my best to follow the recipes, and anyway, gradually, gradually, we learned a little here and there, process of trial and error, and, you know, picking up wherever I could, so as time went by, I became, you know, better, uh, and, and, uh, I still, because I remember our standard from when I joined, you know, I, 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 under, I, I got this idea, you know, that prasadam should be very nice and especially on festival days. So, so I got into it you know, already on an early stage. And I have to say some of my best experiences in Christian consciousness was just, you know, working hard in the kitchen and preparing, you know, a, a lavish feast and, and just, you know, serving for all the devotees and just see them, you know, happily uh, relishing the Krishna Prasadam. Uh, for me this was, I, I, I could immediately understand, yes, uh, Krishna is pleased, this is, when the Krishna's devotees are pleased, and we can understand Krishna is pleased. So, a very practical uh, approach to Krishna consciousness. And so much 
uh, uh, contradicting this impersonal uh, uh, impersonalism. Uh, like Prabhupada says somewhere, the, the impersonalists, they cannot understand how, you know, Krishna can enjoy food, uh, how devotees, they can prepare nice preparations for the satisfaction of the Lord and then partake of the remnants and enjoy, you know, life. You know, I was just in in uh, Mayapur for the for the Yas Puja day of the two famous twins, Jananivas and Pankajangri. And there was a, you know, a big feast was served for all the devotees in Mayapur. And uh, even though I'm not a Prabhupada disciple, I was, you know, I had the audacity to sneak in with the Prabhupada. So I, I came to sit just opposite the two twins. and. Uh, it was, you know, you know, I thought here are these two, you know, they, you know, two brahmacharis, and, you know, they look quite austere, skinny, and, you know, always very modest and and, and self-controlled. So, but it was nice to see them sit there and enjoying prasadam. You know, uh, you know they were not having any problem with partaking of this feast and even taking ice cream <laughs> things like that. I thought, wow, this is Krishna consciousness. You know, it's not a dry process. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, there's full engagement for all the senses. And uh, as Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur points out that of all the senses, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. So, uh, how important it is that we have a process which uh, allows us to easily bring that that uncontrollable sense of tongue under control mm -hmm. simply by partaking of prasadam. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Prabhupada said it was one of Prabhupada's very like. Uh, uh, nice statements, uh, something like that. Somebody who uh, perceives the the life-giving heat of the sun, the beauty of nature, and the succulent taste of of prasadam can immediately understand the, the mercy of the Lord. Mm. So, yes. Uh, it's very important aspect of our 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 whole process. The preparation of nice uh, prasadam, cooking for Krishna's pleasure, and partaking of the remnants. Uh, not only are we enjoying, but at the same time we are getting purified. That's a good deal. Normally, if we think about purification, we, we, we get the idea that we have to undergo some suffering to get purified. And, well, often it's like that, but it's not always like that. Actually, the wonderful nature of this process is that we are having, we are enjoying more than anybody else, really. And it, but at the same time, we're getting purified. Uh, so merciful is Krishna, you know, that he has given us such a wonderful process. Uh, uh, and truly speaking, uh, my experience is that, yes, it's nice to take prasadam, but it's even better to prepare prasadam for devotees. The satisfaction is greater of the cook than the eater. Mm. Often I have experienced that after cooking or serving a Sunday feast, for instance, I was so happy that I didn't even feel like eating. I didn't need to. I was just satisfied. Uh, 
So this is the quality, this is the nature of devotional service, that uh, it is more satisfying that to give than to receive. Huh? The servant enjoys more than the master. So much so that Krishna himself, seeing how, much, how happy his devotees were in, in in serving him that he thought I'm missing out. I want to also experience the pleasure that my devotees find in serving me and therefore he became Lord Tritan. Just huh? so see, we think, you know, the conditioned soul he has this causeless unwillingness to surrender to Krishna. He thinks that you know, if I have to serve, then I will, you know, I will not enjoy. I will, I will just be a slave. But just see, you know, actually, the activity of serving is so wonderful, so nice that even Krishna himself, he wants to experience that pleasure. It's, it's a great lesson for us. If we have any reluctance to uh, to serve, then we should understand this is simply our illusion. Mm -hmm. The activity of service is so nice. Uh, there is nothing better than that. How this is so, very difficult to understand, uh, except from the point of view that if we understand that this is actually our constitutional position. Servants we are, we are made for that. And uh, if somebody takes up his constitutional activity, naturally he will feel happy, he will feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It has to be like that. So, uh, What is our constitutional activity? The performance of yajna. In this material world, this is a technical term. Yajna is specifically a term which is used in the context of a conditioned soul in the material world. We don't speak about yajnas being performed in the spiritual world at least not as far as I have. Of course, it's the same thing, but generally it's a, it, it's a terminology which is, is used in connection with uh, the, the purifying activities, of, uh, the aspiring devotees in this, uh, here in this material world. So, uh, specifically here Krishna explains how by this performance of Jagna actually not only are we all our material necessities being satisfied, fulfilled, but with one stroke we are also making progress, steady progress towards the supreme goal of life. This is a sublime nature of Krishna consciousness. We could not have conceived uh, of such a process ourselves. We can appreciate only Krishna could uh, arrange things in such a way. So let's take advantage, let's appreciate the mercy of the Lord. In one sense, the act of preparing an offering of food for the pleasure of the Lord is simply a, a, a recognition of what Krishna has given us. Mm -hmm. Everything comes from Krishna, all the ingredients that we are using to prepare foodstuffs, 
to be offered. It all comes from Krishna. Uh, and even the ability, the inspiration to cook nicely, it also comes from the Lord. Uh, it's mystical actually. Some people, they go into the kitchen and, you know, they try to follow a recipe and something comes out and it's okay and, you know, we, we, our belly is filled and, you know, but, but then somebody else goes into the kitchen and uses the same in ingredients, maybe follows the same recipe and when it comes out it's like pure nectar, it's like everybody is just feels you know, happy, enlivened, uh, satisfied in all respects. What is it make what is it that makes the difference? It's mystical. Uh, well, the secret ingredient is of course the love and devotion uh, uh, which is very hard to even describe or invoke. Uh, uh, sometimes it seems like somebody just have it and others they just don't get it. It's just, uh, but of course it's, it's inherent in all of us and uh, the, 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 the quality of the process of Krishna consciousness is that it is just meant to awaken that dormant love for Krishna uh, which acts that magic touch to everything we do uh, not, at, not least when we are preparing prasadam for the Lord uh, so of course that that bhakti, that love, it is not just an esoteric thing, it also has you know, very practical uh, it shows in a, in a very practical way if we really have love for Krishna we will take care uh, great care with everything we do when we are cooking we will you know we will put all our energy all our intelligence into really doing it nicely we will try to learn from the experts we will study the cookbooks, we will take extra time to do something nice, you know, not just go and do something just to do it, you know, okay, I, there's some, I made the offering, there's, there's, there's some food on the plate, it's, it's taken on the altar, it's, I was on time, it's, what are you complaining about? Well, <laughs> no, we should always, and it's not just, of course, when we are cooking anything we do, we should, as they say, go the extra mile. That is the bhakti. Not just do, you know, the bare minimum so that nobody will complain. No, do something, you know, do something extra, do something, try to make it not just okay, but nice and nicer, as nice as possible. And it's just, not just by, you know, adding more cream, more sugar, like that, but really do it with full attention, every detail, especially when you put in salt. <laughs> you know, in one sense, you know, it's like many other things, the, the essence of even cooking is, is, is quite simple. You know, the, the most important, at least when you are cooking salty, is, is, yeah, when you put salt in. <laughs> you know, not just, you know, you throw a handful of salt. And, ah, no, you, you, it's very important, the right amount. Like Prabhupada said, sense gratification is like salt. You have to have not too little, not too much, but the right amount. Very important. Even if everything else is not the greatest, you know, it's just a kind of ordinary thing. But if you put the right amount of salt, it will be tasty, it will be nice. It will, but, of course, too much salt ruins the whole thing. But also, too little salt, also not good. 
it will not be, you know, it will not be palatable, it will not, you know, the saliva will not run if there's not enough salt. So, mm. especially when you put in salt, be very attentive. <laughs> and it's not so simple. Before you throw in that handful of salt, I mean in India people always move, measure, they don't move measuring spoons, they move measure in the hand. Prabhupada showed that, right? Measure spices in the hand. So before you throw in that handful of salt, you look, so much salt, here is such a big portion of sabji, pulao, dal, whatever. Is it the right amount? Is it, is it in proportion? Be very careful, stop. Meditate for one minute or half a minute. This is the right amount, and you know. And then when you, if you see yes, it's right. Oh, it's too much. No, it's too much. I take away that, and then you put it in. You know? That little meditation makes a big difference. Anyway, these are practical things, but the essential point is that. Whatever we do, whether it's cooking or anything else, we show our devotion by being very attentive. Uh, attention to every detail. Uh, uh, they say the devil is in the detail. Uh, so, yes. Uh, the main thing is, of course, the siddhanta, the 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 uh, uh, you know the greater picture. The, the overriding goal of everything we do, but we cannot just, you know, forget about the details. Details are important, you know? and it's really in the details that our devotion comes out, in one sense at least. By giving attention to every aspect of what we do, it becomes very nice. We can develop our skills, we can do things, we can cook nicely, we can make nice music, we can manage everything nicely. If we make it a, a yajna in the true sense of the term, we give everything right, for the service of the Lord. Uh, we serve the Lord with our body, mind and words, right? uh, with every faculty of our existence. We try to please Krishna. How nice that you can, you know, everybody can understand it's a common thing. You please somebody you love by, you know, serving them a nice meal. It's such a basic thing. You know, everybody has that, experienced. So we can do that with Krishna. How nice. And he will be pleased. Huh? Rest assured. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we will feel it in a very tangible way. I remember some of the best experiences I had in the kitchen was when I was in, a, for a few weeks, I was in London in Soho Street. And of course, they put me in the kitchen. And I was cooking for Radha London, Ishwar, those, you know, Prabhupada said this was his favorite deity. Somebody once came and showed Prabhupada pictures of Radha Vrindavan Chandra from New Vrindavan. He tried to, you know, somehow, you know, manipulate Prabhupada to say that these are actually in the nicest teachings. Prabhupada didn't go for it. No. Radha London is where they are the most beautiful. It was very clear. So anyway, such a wonderful deities. My favorite Prabhupada's favorite deity, so I was so fortunate to go for, uh, for some weeks. And I have to say that what came out of, you know, from the altar, I never tasted it. I, okay, it was me cooking it, so I can take some pride, but I knew, it, I understood that taste is, I mean, it doesn't usually taste like that when I'm cooking. It was just fantastic. I, I, I could understand, yes. Krishna is pleased, and I was so happy. So, uh, Hare Krishna. I should stop now. Maybe one or two questions.
<laughs> so the, the importance, of course, is that the service you do is done with love mm. and devotion. And uh, also, not just that you're just cooking for the Lord, mm or the Lord's Prayer devoted, but you're also cooking for distribution. Mm. The Lord will accept your love and your devotion. The devotees, on the other hand, are another s story. <laughs> they have tastes. If you're cooking with love, then that taste will come through also. I just wanted to sh share, I, I don't know, maybe some of you were here when Ki Kishori was here. My god sister Kishori used to cook for Prabhupada when he was here in Vrindavan. I came to know her just recently. I'm in France. So she's a, she was an amazing cook. I mean, she was an amazing cook. Mandakini was another amazing cook, both French. Um, I, I think even Mandakini knew how to take something that was burnt and, and still it tasted so fine. I don't know how she did that. I, I, I cooked with her for months and I watched her. It was amazing because she, her heart it's just so fantastic, her love for Prabhupada and her love for the deity. But I, one time, actually a couple of stories for Kishori. One time uh, Kishori was in uh, Delhi and Naratam was here because he was in charge of the deities, I guess. Or maybe he was, I don't know what it was, but Prabhupada had him cook some of this. Kishori. Kishori found out. So she left Delhi immediately and came to Vrindavan. She wasn't going to have him take her service away because she wanted it, because her love was so great to <laughs> cook for Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> so she, she also told some very funny stories of how in the beginning, she, you know, we didn't know all the different items. And once Bhagachi was, was sitting with Prabhupada and, and Prabhupada asked, you sure you know how to make nankim? It's like a snacky thing, mm -hmm. like crackers. And Kishori had the vaguest idea how to do this, but she wasn't going to miss out on the service because she, she loved Prabhupada so much, she didn't want to have somebody else cook for him. She wanted to cook, so she said, Oh yes, Srila Prabhupada, I know how to make numpkin. <laughs> and she was thinking, in the morning I'll go to the town, go to Lower Bazaar very early, to all the wallas, and then I'll find out how to do that. <laughs> So, but Prabhupada said, so maybe you can do that now. So this is like nine, nine o'clock at night. <laughs> so uh, then the Prabhupada said, you have uh, some different, the different tools that you'll need to make the namkin? So she, she said, oh yes, surely Prabhupada. And st she didn't know. But anyway, she went to the kitchen and she saw one of these you know, one of these big, big ladles that you t you take the puris out of the the uh, the ghee, the the big ones with the big holes in them. Mm. So she took that thing and she put it on her shoulder, and she went from the kitchen and she went into prop. But I have this prop button. <laughs> so oh, very nice. <laughs> so. Then uh, she didn't really know what kind of ingredients, so she thought she would trick Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> She'll trick him into t telling her the whole recipe. <laughs> so she said, so there are three kinds of atta, Srila Prabhupada. There's japati atta, and there's this uh, uh, besan, and I forget what other kind of atta. Maybe rice flour, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe like that. Which flour would you like, Srila Prabhupada? <laughs> so Prabhupada said, basin, basin is nice, chickpea flour. So she said, you want it salty or you want it sweet? She's thinking, you know, he's going to give me the recipe. <laughs> so salty, oh, very nice. Do you want uh, chilies or you want black pepper? And it went on like that. Anyway, she figured something out, she went back into the kitchen 
and figured out how to do something and then brought it in to Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was very pleased because her desire to, sh to please Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is called yajna. This is sacrifice. This is true sacrifice because you're doing it for the pleasure of the shanta, of the, of the pure devotee. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's your link to Krishna. There are many other stories like that. Kishore is a very unique individual. <laughs> so funny that you mentioned Kishore, because I just moved to France five, five months ago, and I just I, just recently I, I I'm coming to. She home. used to run a restaurant called Chez Moi with me, mm. and uh, I think I was first married at that time. That was a long time ago. That was like thir at least thirty years ago, and uh, we went to that restaurant. And she, her cooking was very simple because the French people, well, they're very, they're very uh, particular about what they eat, the French people. And uh, they like a lot of butter also. But she, whatever she made there was very simple but for so tasty. Mm. And everything, of course, was offered. It was all prasadam. Very, very nice. Everything she did was so nice. Because her love, the depth of her love, for Srila Prabhupada was completely unfathomable. You cannot find how deep that is. And this is the secret of the yajna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes. There are other cooking stories too, but that's, that's enough for now. <laughs> Thank you. Haribo.